If you're listening on podcast, be sure to tune in to our YouTube channel for more content. The link is in the description. Welcome to Wild and Weird Radio, a Wild and Weird West Virginia podcast. Are we experiencing an increase in paranormal activity? Some suggest we are. From sightings of UFOs, UAPs, to orbs and Bigfoot, we are seeing more and more reports coming out daily, and some are even making the news. So what is going on? Is it all just due to an increase in social media platforms, or are we experiencing an actual uptick? Join us as we look at the possibility of an increase in weird activity in this episode of Wild and Weird Radio. Welcome to Wild and Weird Radio, everybody. Glad to have all of us back in the house again. Uh, Thanks for everybody who's listening. Remember, if you are watching this on YouTube, go ahead and mash that subscribe button right over here. Hit the notification bell. That way, every time we release new content, you get it fresh right in front of your face, sent alerts to your phone, to your desktop, anywhere you go. You cannot escape wild and weird radio. That's absolutely right. And make sure that if you are listening, then to head over to our YouTube where you can actually watch and learn a little bit more and get some different uh, content from time to time, right? Absolutely, because some of the episodes are a little longer on YouTube. We have uh, not, not only longer, but... You'll get visual content added in as well. So anytime you hear us say something like, yeah, so when we're looking at this, normally there's going to be a picture thrown up in there and you can join in and take a look right there. Plus you can throw in some comments as well. That if not, you can actually just respond use your to. imagination. I mean, I think, right? I mean, I can just do that. Just, it's always just... nice to have visual aids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and like the best part is, you know, if you guys are listening on podcast and you guys leave reviews, we love the reviews. They're fantastic. But we can't respond to those. We can't say, oh, we love you back. But yes. on YouTube, we can actually engage in conversation right there about the specific topic. And uh, that's actually been really fun. So that's been head over there. Take a look at that. Check it out. And uh, And for the live premieres, right? I mean, we go there every Friday at at 8 Eastern, you know, so join us. It's fun. It's it's a good time, guys. So how is everybody doing? I feel like we all haven't been in the same room forever. We're back. We're not in the same room, but, you know, it's kind of the same virtual room kind of thing. So how's everybody doing? We're good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Very busy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can relate. We actually we had a um, an event that we were just at yesterday. It was fantastic. Wow, uh, it was was it? Yeah. Dave Spinks World of Weird. Uh, it was the first mini cosmic series. connections. The the first, which you yeah. think like, what is that? Well, it was amazing. Is what it was. We had a little UFOs. We had a little bit of paranormal. We had a little bit. We even threw some Bigfoot in there, didn't we? Yeah, we we did. It was it was a great show. Um, the people that turned out were awesome, and we had a great time talking to everybody. And everybody had a great time. Um, it it was it's one of these places where uh, when you if if you come to one of the events at Dave's place, um, they're they're in this location that is just very very cool because you're right outside the uh, Monongahela Forest, and um, on top of that. It's just a really intimate gathering place. So you can talk face to face. You're able to get one on one and spend time with people who are hanging out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And let's not just forget the food. Oh, sweet Lord in heaven, the food. Oh, yeah. So I got to go to a new place. I think Ron and Maria had been there previously with Dave. Um, Which one? But the pool house. 
No, we've never been there. Oh, so that was your first trip to the pool house? Yes, too? that was amazing. Oh. Okay, yeah. that's that's like the new place to go be. Jesse and Joe, yes. whenever we go up and uh, get you guys into the mon with us to go do wow. an investigation, it, we got to eat at the pool house the night before we go in because... Old pork nachos. Bang it. Ah, okay. Yeah, we're, we're, every time we go on an expedition, uh, Jesse, or we, trust me. we yes. go to uh, conventions or anything like that, part of the planning is also where are we going to eat while we're out there. So. We were Absolutely. thinking about you. Absolutely thinking about yeah. you. I well, we went to thinking of Jesse, when Jesse. we went to CryptidCon. We went to um, it's at, and CryptidCon is always in Lexington, and yeah, um, yeah. we end up eating at Joe Bologna's downtown. It's our favorite Italian restaurant in the world, and they have breadsticks the size of my arm. So <laughs> we always pick out restaurants that we're going to eat at, and we tend to if we find a good one, we'll eat at it like every night that we're in town. So. We're definitely going to have to go eat there with you guys next time around because yeah, we sure. uh, and and what's crazy is we're literally typically we're in we're in Lexington every other month mm-hmm. um, and we've never been to Joe Baloney's. Oh, yeah, yeah, we've it's, heard about it, but yeah, like it's, it's got the helmet holler stamp of approval. So, oh, yeah, cool. We're going to have to definitely go check that out. Definitely. So what do we got going on in the news, guys? Let's, so let's open the... up the news. Do all that stuff. Okay. Well, where shall we start, sir? Well, I think um, we we had the Phoenix Lights uh, article that went up. I think that was on Monday uh, mm, that you yeah. posted up. It was about yeah. this, the uh, give that one a rundown because like this is we're revisiting the Phoenix Lights. Uh, how many years after now? Just too many. I don't even remember when it was, to be honest with you. Uh, Weather balloon. 97. Was that right? Yeah. I think it was, it was 97 or 98. I think it was 97. I had the original uh, news clipping around here somewhere, but uh, it was a big deal, you know? I mean, and there's been so much stuff about this where it had been covered up and, you know, and whatnot. And, um, and the way that this thing moved, I always said I thought it may be, you know, some kind of a top secret balloon or something to that nature. And, and who knows? I mean, to this day, I don't know that it was, and I don't know that it wasn't. But now someone else is saying it could have been one of these massive airships, these experimental air platforms that uh, that was flying over. If it was, in my opinion, it shouldn't have been, and it was probably uh, it, it, in danger of crashing, something like that. You know, it, it got down too low. I don't think that there was any reason that they would show that thing off to that many people. And- um, when he says airship, think something on the scale of like the um, helicarrier, the shield helicarrier. Shield. Yes, exactly. That's that, exactly. That's the kind of thing, like uh, an air carrier, but in the sky, something yep. that we could deploy from um, at high altitudes. Yep, that would be the only thing that made any sense to me. Other than that, it was it was something else, you know. Uh, and you know, it's very interesting because so many people have seen it. Uh, some said it did drift with the wind and whatnot, and others said, you know, it didn't. And there was multiple sightings of, in the flare cover up. There was so much stuff, you know. Yeah. Uh, Dave actually was in that area, Dave Spinks, and he he said, you know, he will come on at some point and talk about this because I think it's going to be this, uh, it maybe in his next book. I'm not sure what he's going to do, but uh, and you know, this is from somebody who was actually on the ground. And um, he didn't see it, but we need to get a hold there. of Jamie too. We need to have Jamie. There's on more people that. that we know yeah. who have actually witnessed this thing. So uh, yeah, man. Now they're saying, you know, that was probably just a balloon. I don't personally buy it. If it was, like I said, it was. It was one heck of a balloon. It was something. Right. You know, yeah. this. This is like we should definitely have developed our balloon technology. Okay. Yeah. There was also a lot of fallout uh, after that happened, where uh, I think it was, was the governor brought out a man yes. in an yes. alien yeah. suit yes. and really just made a mockery of the whole thing. And yes. anybody who was, you know, convinced what they saw, that they said that they saw something that was an unidentified flying object that could have been extraterrestrial, it didn't matter because now everybody was laughing at you, including the governor. So, yeah. um, yeah. That was kind of an a-hole move. I watched a uh, I watched a documentary and they were talking to him and he just seems like such a d-bag. So yeah, um, yeah. there's a lot yeah. of fallout from that and a lot of people got got burned from that. So he uh, um, in the last couple of years he actually apologized for that. Well, he came yeah. out and said and, he saw it and, and he it. said that he actually witnessed. Yeah. Yeah, no. I mean, he completely retracted that story, which says, hey, did someone tell you to go out and do that? Which he swears they didn't. But let's be real. Let's read. But when you publicly mock people like that, that 
causes right. people who have these experiences to not want to come forward and, That's exactly and talk right, about them. Jess. Right. That is so, exactly right. That's when you I, like when you call someone, you know, crazy or they're wearing a tinfoil hat, you know, things like that, for example. Yeah. That is bad. So, yeah, it's a uh, it is what it is. Um, I'm sure that more things are going to kind of come out because as we go along, we keep getting it seems like every day some kind of UFO or, you know, extraterrestrial story kind of leaking out. Um, the one that I have this week is the best ever photo of a UFO emerges oh, this 50 is years after it was taken by a map maker. Yeah. Um, so uh, aerial photographer Sergio Lo uh, Loeza uh, was flying at 10,000 feet above Costa Rica with a special camera, and he was taking photos of the terrain um, for a project for a it was a what was a civil engineering project they were working on. Well, he didn't he didn't develop the photos until recently, uh, a couple of the photos until recently. And in one of the photos, uh, and Ron will link to it, and uh, or he'll pop it up on the screen, whatever kind of magic he performs. And <laughs> you can see it on the left side. It looks like a disc-shaped UFO. It looks like the the classic depiction of a disc-shaped yep. UFO. So um, yeah, and this has emerged after 50 years. So I think it's pretty cool. It almost, I mean, it almost looks photoshopped, but it's, it is, they say it's real. So this is a pretty serious guy, but it is from the uh, mirror.co.uk site. So the salt of brain we will take. So yeah, yeah the, uh, I've about. seen the image and, and if it holds muster, here, here's the, the best way to test this. Obviously 50 years ago, they're, they're not using any kind of digital platform to take their pictures. Right. Uh, so you're going to have this on actual film yeah. and it will be easy to tell yep if it's if, in the negative if it was doctored or not so yeah. yes so yeah it, it does look like a very credible photo though uh, i mean it, it's a great shot and um it's just right there on the edge of the screen there and it's perfect it's got you have you can see reflection in it um it looks metallic um it's just it looks like a classic dish shape ufo and of course, the skeptics are going to tell you that that is a high altitude weather balloon and that it looks disc shaped because it is being compressed by atmospheric conditions. Yeah, we actually had a conversation with some of those folks on a different podcast about a year and a half ago, and that was priceless. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, dude, I, I don't know what this thing is, but there's something there in there. I mean, yeah, it's, there, it's just there seems getting... to be something physical there. Now, it like mm -hmm. like Jesse said, we all kind of have this tendency to look at some of these photos and uh, uh, you, your skepticals already come on, right? Yeah. And and you want to yeah. analyze this as investigators, not just as like your run of the mill, uh, just scroll doom scroller that's going through and like rapid scrolling through stuff. We look at these things in a way um, very analytically. We want this to be real, but we don't necessarily believe it when we first see it. So we scrutinize it until we can find a point to say, okay, well, this is unexplainable, um, which is how this research needs to be conducted. And, uh, but looking at this vid, the, not the video, but the picture, looking at this picture, it looks very good. And if yeah, it was, yeah. if it was Photoshopped, it was like somebody, whoever did it is like, well, fantastic. Why, why did they do it? True, I think th true, that's yeah. your next question. Why did it take 50 years and why did they do it now, now of all times? And why is it being, you know, uh, it has good standing, like Jess said. This isn't something that, you know, Bob out in, you know, uh, the Ozarks took a picture of. This is uh, from an actual legitimate source. And it says that it was it was in the custody of the Costa Rican government because this was for a hydroelectric plant that they were planning. So they had all of the film and all the photos in their possession um, and this photo was acquired and scanned by the UFO research UAP media. So um, it looks like it was in the custody of the Costa Rican government. So who knows? Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, that's something if you ask me. Now, uh, my favorite news article of the week was shared by Travis Rednick, uh, guest on the show a couple weeks back and also the owner of the Deep End Antique Store. Uh, if you guys haven't checked that out yet or want to, just go to Facebook, check it out. I mean, the stuff's insane. Anyway, 
this article that he shared was about the largest cave figures discovered in America, and they were found in Alabama. Um, the the geology in that specific area is very special. Uh, it is known as what we call karst land. Um, that's not cursed, but karst. It just means that there's a geological sure? structure it's that not allows karst? for caves. That's not pirate talk. Could be uh, it, it, it might be. <laughs> it sounds like it's my grandpa cursed. saying cursed. It's cursed land. It's cursed right, right. Land. Like it's uh, yeah. that, that's that's kind of what I was thinking too. Is like kind of like my grandpa if he was saying it. Like Kelly was uh, Kelly, my wife was talking to my grandpa today, and um, she was uh, just recently put on an iron supplement, and uh, he he said she told oh. him about it, and he's like, oh yeah, she buddy when when that iron's low. Iron, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, as we were cracking up about it. I saw a far ball in the sky. Yeah. Uh, now, my favorite was when he would say, it's going to key you. Yeah. Said, kill. It's going to key you. And like when I was little, he would say, I'm going to key you. It's going to kill you. Key you. Like I, I envisioned like this big key chasing me. And, and it was rather. And that would be a car. <laughs> right? my, my great uncle's name was Howard, but I didn't know his name was Howard until I was almost an adult because everybody called him hard. hard. So. I thought his name was Howard, not Howard. So, yeah, but we, uh, North Carolina, that, that nice North Carolina accent. <laughs> well, anyway, back to Alabama uh, being with a banjo on your land. Knee? I mean, it's, it is Alabama, so it might be Karst. But anyway, um, we got uh, this, this geologic structure that basically allows for caves to form and uh, they're exposed to the surface as well. And what these created were just natural shelters that were used by paleo man um and there were some very 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 archaic scratchings that were done on the wall now these aren't um these aren't paintings so you know you're always hearing about cave paintings these are actually etching that's etched into the ceiling of these caves and one of the uh glyphs is of a looks like a spirit man is the best as i can explain it um and uh, it, it's six feet long. It's uh, just a hair over six feet long, actually. So this is man-sized figure that has been etched into this uh, into the ceiling of this thing. And we'll we'll provide the photos um, thanks to fair use and all that good stuff. We can actually use those and put them up. But they're they're so cool to find those because they're estimated to be well over a thousand years old. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's pretty cool. That, what that would put is it it falls back into the whole fallen world worlds series and people hiding out in caves and in that well, thousand you know, year ago time frame people like to hide out in caves i mean that's that's just it, you know? <laughs> yeah Damn, I don't have to hide out in caves me so. personally they've only released one image right there's a couple yeah and and one of them uh the spirit man like i was uh, i was mm-hmm. talking about the spirit man's the the best one they've shown so far it's big and and it's big and i i want to see more i want to know more mm. um and, and what's crazy about this cave is there's actually uh stalactites in it yeah so there's there's mineral seepage too so mm-hmm. you know this is uh the only the only way that this could be preserved is the fact that it hasn't been messed with till now because if you know what stalactites are and how they're formed the mineral composition of the roof of those caves are extremely soft mm-hmm. and any kind of grazing up against them could ruin the glyphs. So it's, it's really, really cool that they found these and now they're going to protect them and hopefully document every one of them because I cannot wait to see the pictures and the scans of what these images are going to be. Yeah. They're, they're going to be interesting. They look, I mean, the way they're described and what I'm seeing right now, that we might have some of the earliest depictions of cryptids that we've right ever now, seen. Right. right. So, because Guys, it's like you have serpents, flying creatures. What did you uh, say, 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 say that again, Jess? Sir, a serpent, flying creatures, and humanoid figures in regalia. Um, so flying creatures, not birds, you know. So that's pretty interesting that it's flying creatures and not specifically named as birds. Yeah. Um, possibly a bird, but flying creatures is what they lead with. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what these pictures look like when they come out, when they get the scans done. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and... As am I, because I'm hoping, I've got my fingers crossed. I know it's a stretch, but. Maybe. 
It's in the right time frame if we're it right. Is. It's, in, it's the right in the right template. area if we're right. Yeah. So that's that's a very good possibility, my friend, that it could be something to that nature. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, what's also amazing is you guys have to remember. I mean, these you were want to elaborate on that for the people who can't see you with your... Yeah, yeah the oh, people who can't yeah, see you. Remember yeah, sorry. The, remember the for those of you guys who are listening, um, we've got a one-to-one -one sculpture that will be available uh, that you guys can order. Um, it's going to be made in a refrigerator magnet form. Uh, you can also turn it into a necklace if you wanted, because that's what it originally was. But it is a gorget that was found in uh, in Kentucky in a mound. And we have spoke with a few anthropologists, including Kathy Strain, Dr. Jeff Meldrum, um, and some other uh, folks who have links to archaeology. And they agree that the effigy is not what... Um, not it's what the official description as. has been given is. Yeah, it could be. It could be something else. It could yes, be it a could possible be. humanoid now, type figure. We, right. We don't know what it is, but they all agree that it is a humanoid figure and not a panther. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting about this cave, guys, is that this was deep inside this cave, and um, they would have been working with torches to make these things, or they would have had fires lit to make these things, et cetera. Um, if that's the case, it should be easy for them to find this. Yeah. Because there would be black, you know, the ceiling would be black. Yes. Because, you know, this would have took some time to make these things. It's also known that caves were very sacred, uh, extremely sacred to to uh, the early, you know, the early people. They they viewed these as the Impalio, as the uh, navels of the world, as the links to the underground. These were very, very, very sacred places where the gods lived. They would not go into these places without reason. Right. So, and usually that was to bury their dead uh, or to leave offerings for, you know, bountiful harvest, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, it's interesting to know why they would go into this cave and carve all these these things into the ceiling. And I would love to know how it's been dated yeah. I mean, how old are they really? That's a good question, you know. Um, trying to trying to date that is gonna be really tough simply mm -hmm. because the uh you're dealing with something that's gonna date very similar to camel coal. You've got they're on the ceiling of a uh of <clears throat> kind of a muddy cave. So you're going to have all of this new material that is constantly appearing through moisture and and breakdown on the stone. So it's going to be really, really squirrely to yeah. try to date those properly and accurately. Yeah, I definitely. Kind of made me think about something about this. I was just looking this up is, you know, you were mentioning that if they looked into the cave and found like the soot where they had the torches and everything, um, if they don't find that kind of thing, you know that North Alabama is, of course, right next to North Georgia, which is the southern Appalachian region. What is a big legend around North Georgia in that yeah. area? The Moon-Eyed People. The Moon-Eyed People. The Moon-Eyed People. I knew you were going there. I love yes. it. <laughs> yes, yes. So you've got so, people who can go into the caves and see in the dark. That's right, Jess. Yes. Art, right? That's what I was yes. just thinking. I was like, wait. This is so close. This has got to be close to where the Moon-Eyed People legend is. And the Moon-Eyed People are a race of people that were expelled by the Cherokee, who they're called the Moon-Eyed People because they can't see very well during the day, but they can basically just see in the dark. And they're mm -hmm. a they're a whole other like race of Cherokee adjacent people. So that legend is from around kind of that area. So that's kind of a cool little thought, like a connection there. It, it really is. And that was actually where my mind kind of went as well. Um, because when you look at the two images that are provided, there is no soot. Yeah. Yeah, and, I, I noticed that. And they're not going to clean. You're not going to go in and clean the stone for an archaeological site because no. the the soot could also be a way that they could date what's there. Yeah. My guess is there was a lot of... Uh... A, a great deal of um, what is it um, lidar that was probably used um, yeah. in those images to to capture them without any any harm to them. 
Well, our next uh, our next story is uh, very interesting, and um, I I came across it and I didn't quite know what to say about it because apparently a radio message will be sent to an alien solar system this year. Uh, Trappist One, it's uh, 39 light years from Earth, and we're sending a signal to it. My biggest thing about this was. Um, that should be something that is the last stage of SETI protocol. <laughs> Theoretically. For those who don't know. We're going to that, go straight to the end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we didn't go through steps one, two, and three. We went straight Unless to we four. have. Right. And step three should have been uh, a release to the public that such a signal has been discovered, if I remember correctly. Well, technically, we have received signals, and there were mm. unknown signatures. Yeah, well, it was kind of, you know, we've forgotten about. But, um, yeah, apparently they're going to send a signal to it. And, uh, I mean, I don't know. It's basically this. Researchers' team are planning to beam a message to an alien solar system called TRAPPIST-1 later this year. Sounds like a great planet system. The message will contain information about Earth's environmental crisis, along with selected pieces of music. Scientists are debating whether initiating contact with an alien civilization is a good idea. Yeah, see, um, one of the things that, uh, they, the, you know, was also being debated was if we should send nudes. Well, we I'm did not, it before. No, it was kidding, guys. Like this was yeah. legit. There are people who yeah. are in this signal thing. They're, mm. they're like, they co- we. I was contacted, and they're like, "You are the male specimen that we want to send the nudes of to this planet, for fear to strike fear." Oh. And- <laughs> no. But no, for, for real, they they have uh, debated on sending nude photos of humans oh, in this. They're sig- they're on the you know they're the Voyager. The yeah, they're on the golden discs. They're they're on the Voyagers. You know, they're on the metal plate right on the side of it. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I, you know how I feel about this sending messages directly to um, alien worlds. I'm a little mixed on it's that. It's a little, a little mixed. Yeah. Give me a little uneasy, uneasy feeling there. <laughs> Just and they're only thirty nine light years away, guys. Let me explain to you what that means. If they're capable of light speed. Or faster than light speed. They can be here in. <laughs> yep. That means they're close, guys. Yeah, that means they're close. Hopefully oh, they're not like hey, a race of bug, Joe, bug d- crawdad people who want to come here and eat us. Didn't we say that uh, confirmation would come from a um, further away source and not so close to Earth uh, at one point if, if it were made? I believe that was... That that was an episode, I do believe. I believe we said something like that. However, the, it is important to say that a signal has not been acknowledged from a Trappist uh, Trappist One at this time that we know of. Okay, so we can't really go there. But apparently, we're just going to send a random message out for no reason whatsoever. I mean, it's kind of like picking your phone up, I guess, and just dialing a random number. And it makes no sense to me. It's like crank call on a universe. <laughs> makes absolutely zero sense to me. Why was it chosen? I, you know, why? Okay. Hey, you know, <clears throat> the worst case scenario is we could start broadcasting to Trappist Nun and they could listen to Wild and Weird Radio. Oh, well, you know what? We could do that. Let's just we could that. pick up some new listeners, folks, and, Did you say nude and listeners? maybe sway them, sway them from like, you know, really? Did you just say nude listeners or new listeners? I'll leave that up to you. What what did he say? (laughs) Well, if you're living on Trappist One, you got something to look forward to, apparently. Uh, Um, Yeah. Well, anyway, I think uh, that's, you know, that's kind of the news. But uh, we did have an anniversary this week. We did. We did have an anniversary. And um, we had it was the anniversary of the first Bigfoot workshop. And, guys, we are planning Bigfoot workshop, too. It's coming, so stay tuned. If you don't know what that is, uh, head over to the page, and you'll get to see uh, a little bit of talk about that. But they're really fun engagements. There's about 25 people, I think, is all yeah. we let come in, right? We do some really fun stuff. We have 
casting classes. We have uh, some tracking classes. We have, um, you know, recognition, audio recognition. We have all kinds of stuff. Talks. It is. And... It's you get you get a uh, one full day of how to conduct research, and then we go take you out and do the thing in a mock investigation and show you how it's done in the field in, in real time. Yeah. You get to and, go and hang out at, in the evening with us and sit yeah. in the dark and listen, which is really cool because the last time we heard some really cool owls and we did. And, uh, really the fun. one, the one thing that I can promise about the workshops is we will not put you on Bigfoot. Uh, <laughs> but we will put you on some, I guarantee you that we will put you on some very interesting nocturnal animals that uh are rare and you will be able to have these experiences and you never know because the areas that we conduct these uh workshops in are actually in our research areas so we, while we can't area. guarantee a bigfoot encounter or any kind of uh anomalous phenomena to take place you're in an area that is prone to having said activity take place mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're going to be a lot of fun. So keep watching the page for that when we announce the uh, you know the official the official stuff for that because it is coming. So and uh, on top of that, with Wild and Weird Con 2022, uh, our our favorite people on the planet, Jesse and Joe, are going to be conducting the night workshop, the actual yes. uh, Wild and Weird Con night investigation workshop. Yes will be conducted by Jesse and Joe. You wanna give them a rundown on that real quick? Yes, absolutely. So we are so excited to do this this year. Um, we have huge plans for this. It's gonna be very, very limited because we can't have a huge group of people doing it. So as soon as they open up signups for this, make sure you go and check that out and uh, sign up for it. So it's gonna be the Friday night before Wild and Weird Con at Chief Logan State Park and Basically, Joe and I are going to give a talk. We're going to have all of our equipment out there, all of our cool pieces of tech that we use in real investigations. We're going to have everything out there, our packs, um, all of our gear, and we're going to talk about all the stuff, how we conduct investigations. We'll do a little Q&A, and then everybody comes up. Everybody can check out all the gear and everything, and then we're actually going to go out on a trail and we're going to have stations set up where you get to actually use the equipment. We're going to show you how to use things like the thermal and we're going to have a we're going to have the uh, Pulsar there the Pulsar Axion XQ38 up there. That is a nice piece of equipment. That is a several thousand dollar piece of equipment that most people will never have a chance to even play with, but you get to use it on that day. We'll have our FLIR out there. We'll also have a parabolic microphone. Um, we'll have the noise canceling headphones so you can actually hear what it sounds like to listen through the parabolic microphone. And um, we'll have a couple other stations set up so you can actually get to check out all of the really cool equipment that we use every time we go out on an investigation and that professional Bigfoot and cryptid hunters use on investigations. You get to check all that stuff out. And then following the investigation with Joe and myself, Joe is, Joe Perdue, is cooking a really, really delicious fireside meal. And we all get to have dinner together behind the lodge and hang out. And um, then we're gonna hit the sack because early the next morning, we're gonna get started with Wild and Weird Con. Joe and I are gonna have, Joe, Joe Doyle, my Joe, <laughs> and I are gonna have a table out there. Um, and then I will be giving a presentation. Um, so if you are interested in joining that, please keep your ear to the ground because we are going to probably release that soon whenever we're going to have signups for that. Like I said, it's a yeah. very, very limited, limited thing because we can only take so many people out into the woods with us and um, hang out and do the thing and make sure that everybody has a really good experience and can really experience using that equipment so it's going to be awesome we absolutely cannot wait and also by the time you're listening to this episode next week if you are in southern west virginia or central west virginia come out and hang out with us at the wood booger jamboree it is going to be fantastic we've got some great bluegrass music that we have planned to show up and play throughout the day we've got um uh awesome food trucks fantastic barbecue uh joint is going to be there selling barbecue 
tons of amazing vendors. It is, uh, it is a Bigfoot party. It is a Bigfoot party is really what it is. And it's a Bigfoot it block is. party. And it it, the best part about it, guys, it is 100% free to attend and 100% family friendly for everybody. And we've got 32 amazing vendors that will be there with us at the show. And from face painters to you name it, guys, literally, we have some of the best artisans in West Virginia showing up to the Woodbooker Jamboree. So you don't want to miss that. Yes, it will be a blast. And we're going to have some little mini Bigfoot talks and workshops, too, under one of the shelters near the river. So those will be going on throughout the day. It's going to be a good time, guys. Like we said, it's all free. Come on down, you know. It's all about the supporting the community. Support the community. Um, the, there's going to be a fundraiser there as well. We're having a fundraiser for Sherman Elementary. And uh, everything is going to go uh, from that fundraiser. We'll go straight to them that day. And it's going to be fantastic. And you're supporting your local community, supporting your local schools. It's going to be awesome. You don't want to miss out. That is what it is all about. That's right, guys. So let's dig into let's, this episode. Um, We've right, got so that's the news then, right? So yeah, that is the news. Up. So we have a fun little episode here for you. And uh, Jesse aptly named it Paranormal Potpourri. I don't want you to say it. I want her to say it. Oh, <laughs> fine. <laughs> it's Paranormal Potpourri. <laughs> With Jesse Doyle. With Jesse Doyle. There we go. That's all. So, uh, so here's here's the skinny guys. Like we've got this fun little stuff. We're going to talk about a lot of different things. All going to be in the paranormal bubble, but uh, it's an awesome little hodgepodge of content is what tonight's going to be. So uh, it, let's. The, this has been a hot topic. Okay, um, this specific one. And we'll start off with we'll start off big, okay? There's been some new stuff with orbs showing up. Oh yeah. And we actually were told about a report this weekend about some orbs from our friends at the Pennsylvania Bigfoot Society, which is headed up by Eric Altman. And uh, this report was actually told to us by uh, by Tom Mihawk. And he's one of the investigators there. He's a good friend of ours. Uh, Ron and I are, are members of the P Pennsylvania Bigfoot Society. And um, essentially, they, they were having these wild experiences up there on the Chestnut Ridge. It is on fire right now, by the way. Not literally on fire. <laughs> no, no, it's not literally it is, on fire. No. It is on fire with wild, crazy stuff going on. Um, they were recently out doing an investigation and following up on a big like Thunderbird sighting, right? Mm -hmm. And then started having other weird things going on. They started seeing these orbs and lights in the trees darting around. Um, these weren't like ground level. These were up in the tree line, like uh, mid canopy kind of scope. And these orbs were ranging from volleyball to beach ball to golf ball sized lights that were darting around. Um, you would see them. They thought they were seeing maybe eye shine at first, until it darted across and into another tree, and it was only one singular point of light. So we're seeing an uptick in this uh, orb activity, and I've seen some folks recently having the same phenomena going on out west as well. Like it's it's almost like this orb phenomena. Either a people are becoming more aware of it, or there's actually a physical uh, or literal uptick in these sightings. What do you guys think? Well, I think, first of all, we need to stop. We need to differentiate orbs because uh, I had this conversation this weekend, too. Uh, up until recently, orbs have been associated with something that most paranormal investigators just say is dust, right? Right, right, so, right. You're 100% right. When it's we're a totally talking different about, phenomena. Yeah. When we're talking about these kind of orbs, Joe, uh, we're talking about self-illuminated spheres of light. Uh, usually uh, several inches to, uh, you know, a foot or so in diameter, right? I mean, these are you know, reported almost like um, like basketball size sometimes. Yeah, the one that I saw was soccer ball, volleyball size. There you go. So they're falling into this category. I mean, uh, and he'll be on to talk about this, uh, I believe, next week, but uh, it's, it's in Stan Gordon's book. There's a, a few cases about that. Um, so... 
I don't know what they are, but uh, I do think that it's apt that I don't know. It's appropriate for us to actually call these things UAPs. That's that's me because um, it it is spits. It's unidentified. It's aerial, and it is a phenomena. It's yeah. not really a UFO, right? Because these things can happen just a couple of inches off the ground. Now, what since? Because then you're dealing with something else as well. That because you UAP is used for various explanations, right? Yeah. You've got solid craft. You've got sentient craft. You've got lights, balls of lights. Like it, it's almost as if this phenomenon needs its own kind of tagline that goes mm-hmm. beyond orbs, beyond UAP. Yeah, we um, need a new name for it. Honestly, it, we do. Or we can does. just take orbs and then screw yeah. their ghost dust. <laughs> All right, let's Jesse. change the other thing to ghost dust and be we're done. Just, we're, yes, we're, Jesse. We're confiscating orbs. We're taking or, orbs from orbs our belong you. are to us now, okay? So be it. Or, yes, it has All been your ordained. orbs are belong to us. Yeah, there you go. Yep. <laughs> it has been so ordained. All in favor? Aye. Okay, that's it. So be it. Ocean carries. And so, Jesse, um, when you guys were out in the LBL, uh, did you guys experience any kind of weird light phenomena out there as well? We did. We did. We, uh, I'm, while I'm working on the video right now, Joe and I are watching all of our footage and we just keep seeing just lights in the woods. Um, and then there's one point where we see a light. Joe actually gets out of the car and tries to film it with um, our cameras and everything. But we just going over the footage like I'm going over right now. We're just seeing it all throughout it, just all throughout just these just points of light that show up in the woods. Wow. Um, and wow. we've experienced orbs. We had this discussion about orbs before. Uh, right. We've experienced orbs that sometimes seem to have almost an intelligence to them, that they are signaling, they're moving, they float, um, they move slowly. But I, we're seeing in our in all of our LBL footage that we're still kind of parsing over and going through that it's it, we're seeing these just points of light that just show up. And we're like, oh, my God, there's another one. There's another one. There's another one. And a lot of our viewers on uh, YouTube have commented on a lot of our videos as, as they're going through and watching our videos that they're seeing points of light that we've actually missed. And this is in the middle of the night, like pitch black night away from any other light sources other than ourselves. And so people are just seeing these points of light show up in our videos. And um, it's it's really fascinating how much that actually happens when you're out in the woods in the dark. Wow. That is really fascinating. I mean, I can't say that I've ever actually seen a a lighted orb. Um, at least if I have it, it didn't make much of an impression on me. But uh, but then again, I usually just like attribute it to like lightning bugs or something because I was almost always out in I was out in the summer. I didn't really go in winter. I don't like cold weather. You know this. You all, you all know this. <laughs> yeah, I don't like cold weather. But um, but yes. Um, I think that there's definitely been something going on uh, as far as the orbs goes. Just, is there more? Is there people, you know, like you said, are they just observing it more now? Or is there actually an uptick in this activity? Um, I don't know. But we have heard a lot just in the past two years about this activity and this activity in particular. Yeah, I mean, even just in, in the last month or two, there's been more of it coming in, yeah. um, more more reports of it showing up on various forums, various uh, like if if you guys are followers of Reddit or any of those forums, um, there's these weird light phenomena posts that are popping up and they seem to be increasing. But again, I, I can't tell if it's something that's actually an increase in the phenomena or of an increase in awareness. Cause that has a lot to do with it. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I just, I, we've noticed that it seems like, oh, how would I, how would I put this? It seems like things are, are things getting weirder, like in general, not just in terms of the orb phenomenon, but like in general, are things getting weirder? Yes. Cause we've been getting just a steady stream of witnesses and other researchers that are just contacting us and the stories that we're being told seem to just they seem like they're accelerating in a way um and I, like you said is are people just more aware of it or is are things just getting weirder and it, it could be that possible explanations for some of this is 
people are cryptid crazy um, and exaggerating stories. And, you know, you've got all these podcasts and all these things shining a light on it. And yeah. you have a lot of people that maybe come up with these stories and it gives, you know, some attention in these different ways or flat out things are just getting weirder. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's one or the other, or I mean, it's both, you know, yeah. it's very possible. Uh, we, I don't know, guys, uh, either, like you said, either the, uh, I guess everybody is seeing something or they are making everything up. Now I do, I will say this about orbs. Uh, ever since a few months back, they started, um, doing promos for Skinwalker Ranch three and yeah. season three, and they did, uh, have a really good orb sighting on there. Uh, very good video of it. In fact, it looks a lot like the videos that we had uh, that was sent in to us. It looks a lot like that uh, as far as the size goes. And But, um, you know, it could be something like that, too. It could just be a collective, you know, consciousness of, of the people who like the weird stuff. Yeah. You know, you know. And, like what I was always thinking, like, what could, like, fuel this kind of acceleration is it like because there's so much turmoil in the world right now and everybody's kind of over the past with the mm -hmm. whole pandemic thing and everybody mm -hmm. just kind of mentally getting well, wound yeah. up that the collective consciousness is just on overdrive right now you know um yes. i think that might feed into some of these things are feeding off of that energy and maybe it's gaining steam um i know that if you are wherever a listener of art bell he would mention the what he would call the quickening and i know that that was more of a reference to environmental things but i think that you could apply that label to this acceleration of the weird right now yeah mm -hmm. and yeah. um you, yeah. you know going back with art bell you know there was also a ton of listeners that were uh very religious and people who would come on the show there that would talk about like end times stuff i'm not a big end times person um, but you've got the quickening thing, but you've also got the, the same terminology. It crosses realms, right? So you have this, uh, they, they were a quickening or a thinning of the veil, or there's all this terminology that's used across basically every group or sect of people yeah. out there that is used to explain the increase in weird phenomena. I think so, it could also just be there, but they got used to it, Joe. Yeah, they could have just got used to it as well, which goes back to the awareness level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like once you're aware of it, you you don't unsee it. Mm -hmm. um, like it, for for example, if you are if you've worked a um, Where's Waldo, you know, like if you've gone through one of the books of Where's Waldo and you found Waldo in the picture. When you go back to that same picture, Waldo is going to stand out to you like a sore thumb. Yeah. Because yeah. you're aware of well wa where Waldo is. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And it's the same kind of thing, I, I believe. You know, people are going out. You know, you've got UFOs in the news. You've got Bigfoot and weird stuff all over TV. People are looking up. They're looking in the forest. They're mm -hmm. becoming more. Um, th there's been also a movement, too, with like kind of detaching from the magic mirror and going out into the forest and mm -hmm. and embracing nature like and and looking at nature the more time you spend out there you see weird stuff just read some of thoreau's work <laughs> you know he he goes into these um these talks about nature and the phenomena and you have to ask yourself uh, is he speaking metaphorically or is he speaking of actual experience that he's yeah. had with nature? Mm -hmm. I, know, mm -hmm. I know what we've really experienced going out and doing this kind of work is the more we go out, the more we are aware of it, it seems like whatever these entities are, what wherever they come from, whatever they are, it seems like they're almost aware that they know we know and so it seems like the phenomena starts to increase as a result of that too that it's almost like these entities 
in a way feel like they can expose themselves to you in a certain way because you already know about it, that it doesn't have to be some sort of hidden thing anymore, that the more you look into it, the more it starts to follow you, the more it starts to ramp up, the more that things start to happen, things follow you home, like the hitchhiker phenomenon. Um, It just, it seems like the more you get into it, the more it seems to happen. Um, I've got a, there was a term that I used to use for that a lot. Um, and and we haven't, I don't think we've talked about it much on here for, for the last year or so, but I called it the beacon phenomena. Mm. Once, once you've encountered something, you know, it's there, your awareness is peaked. And let's just think of this in a, um, extra dimensional sense. Suddenly the beacon lights up in a place where there was no light showing and they say you're like in a, in a dark void and suddenly a a light turns on, you're going to be aware of that light and you might be that light because you're exposed and you're aware of this phenomena now and whatever it was that you encountered now knows, you know, and it sees that beacon across the void. So So you're just a, you're a paranormal lighthouse. Paranormal lighthouse. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. And, and it's like a signal. It, it does sound like, you know, in some cases that it, it is like that, that you are giving off a signal, something unseen, and that they gravitate toward that, or it gravitates toward that. It also, you know, seems to uh, show me that we are dealing with an intelligence. I'll say that again. Don't know what it is, but it's some form of intelligence, especially if it has the ability to uh, almost test you, right? I mean, that's kind of what it's doing. How much of myself can I show? You know, how yeah, much? in a way, that's that that could be the way you could perceive it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's one way that you could perceive it. There are other ways too, but it does seem that some of these things are exhibiting a form of intelligence, though. Yeah, yeah, uh, like like specifically the the balls of light. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've said this before on here too. It seems like when you go looking for dog man, dog man looks for you back. Yeah. Um, then people who go into these haunted houses, you know, they go in with an expectation and their expectation, expectation might just be fulfilled because the intent and the inclination is there and their awareness could be peaked. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, so they experience yeah. the phenomena. It works the same in ritual magic too. It's intention yep. and uh, you know intention ritual and doing everything in a repetitive sense and putting it out there. You put that wave out into into the ocean and then it hits something and comes back. Um, so I think that it all kind of ties in together and it's all kind of it's so strange. It's it's we're 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 feeling around in the dark and everything all the time and yeah. I I don't think we'll ever have the missing pieces to this puzzle the puzzle's too big you know um but it's just it's it's you can't we can't stop you know <laughs> once you no. start once you start you no. can't stop no yeah. we can't and it's about gathering all those puzzle pieces you know this is one of those things again you know it's like pokemon once you get one you got to catch them all kind of and but <laughs> you know Like you may have a piece of the puzzle that, you know, I need for my little piece. And then those two pieces may have to go together to form someone's piece 30 years in the future. You know, these, this is why it's important to collect these stories, you know, like we do with the collective. That's what that's all about. That's because one person's not going to figure it out. And, uh, you know, it's, you brought up the ritual mag magic part and, and how similar that is with the intent awareness and, the um, expectation and it is the same with every kind of religious activity Um, there's there's literally no difference the more you look at it and you you see it in the simplest terms it is expectation intent and awareness and uh, regardless what religion what you practice any of that it's the root the action the activation it it all comes from those three things, the the awareness, the expectation, and the intent. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So with uh, Bigfoot stuff, because we're paranormal potpourri, we've covered the 
walk walking the gamut here. Um, Bigfoot stuff's kind of been on a, a little bit of an uptick as well. Um, it, there's been a lot of sightings that have been coming in all across the country. Um, not just not just to us, but we've we've had stuff that's been um, popping up. And again, it goes back into that same thing. Is it just that people are watching the stuff and they're aware of it, or they're going out looking for it actively and they're having yeah. these encounters, um, or that they're just paying more attention? Um, it, it's it's hard to say. Yeah, yeah. But it does seem like the weird is increasing. It seems like weird activity, and then that ties back into so many other theories. <laughs> that, it really does. You know, it really does. You know, but a lot of these Bigfoot sightings, man, um, a lot of them are just people who don't know what they're seeing. Yeah. They, they don't know the difference between a bear and a Bigfoot. They don't know the difference between, you know, wood knocks and, and squirrels, you know, dropping nuts on logs. I mean, this is one of the issues. They know just enough to be dangerous. Yeah. So they go out and they have these experiences. I mean, come on, dude. Even you and me have had these weird things happen in the woods. And where well, we have to sit there and say, wait, what is oh, oh we yeah, caught one of my that's video. this. Oh yeah, the, the wind blowing the, the leaves, right? Yeah, the, the wind and that little ironwood mm-hmm. tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wind, yeah. Or a beech tree. Yeah, that was a beautiful example. It was like, you know, yeah. what is what is that sound? You know? And we looked around and we found it. But yeah. how many people do? Yeah. How many people just pull out their camera and start pointing it around the sky or the ridge line saying, do you hear that? Do you hear that? Post to TikTok. Right. And that, that, do you hear that? Do you hear that? Like, uh, when you tell that to people, sure then, they hear it. then people are going to hear it because yeah. they're, they're listening, they're expecting, and their brain is starting to try to make those connections. And it's like, oh, I hear it, I hear it, hear it, and there's literally nothing there. It's a psychological trick. We definitely do that in our videos, and people get so mad because, like, we'll be, it's like in the last video, the LBL video at the end, we're doing our night investigation, and the wind is, like, kicking up really hard, and I had to use my Phasm camera, and Joe was with, had my Sony, but we couldn't have any of our really good audio equipment out. So we were hearing all of this stuff going on around us, and I was like, oh, God, do you hear that? And describing it, but you can't hear it on the video. And so well, it's like... The, oh. It There's a big us difference. Crazy, and then it also it drives all of our viewers crazy too. They're like, "We can't hear it," and I have people telling me, well, "You need to have this and then this." And I was like, "There's a hurricane coming. I wish I could, but I paid a lot of money for my Zoom, and you know, yeah. I know I can. Yeah. I need to get this evidence." And, I know. and there's a <laughs> there's a big difference between actually hearing something and saying, "Can you hear that?" and it just not being detected by audio <laughs> equipment, and just going out there and using the power of suggestion mm-hmm. to Oh, did you hear that? You know what I mean? And uh, it that's that's I think the big thing. Like that's where a lot of people get uh, hooked in with some some content pr- producers, especially yeah. at TikTok, like Ron had mentioned. They're like, Oh, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you see that? And they're yeah, like, dude. Oh, oh, there's a Bigfoot in the background of your video. And then that's you what look they into it and it and it's a four wheeler. That's yeah. what they the, want. The answer coming back is like, it must have been an electric four-wheeler because I didn't hear it's, anything running. It's yes, fun. Yes, that's a it's, real it's thing. Crypto, it's cryptotainment, you know? It's cryptotainment. Exactly, <laughs> Jess. But, and yeah. it's kind of like uh, wrestling. Yeah, but if that's hey kind now, of... Like, don't you talk about my wrestling like, like that. Saying it's kind of like wrestling. But if, it's, if that's like a gateway drug into cryptozoology or people being interested in cryptozoology or paranormal investigations and then they start really taking it seriously but yeah. that's how they got exposed to it but then they start taking it very very seriously and, you and then the they start getting into it then that's awesome you know um yeah. it's um it, but it is a lot of that's cryptotainment that's okay but um like even with what i do is i take what i do very seriously but I, my videos are also entertaining, you know, because yeah, you've got to be, otherwise no one's going to want to watch it. No, yeah, right. That's why I no have, one watches us, Jess. Somebody asked me the other day, <laughs> somebody asked me the other day, they're like, well, you need to upload all of your raw footage from LBL. I was like, I'm not uploading hundreds of hours of video no. onto YouTube for you to pour over. I was like, that's no, oh. no. I was like, that, that what you see is just the it's it's the good stuff throughout our our expeditions you know um and but nobody wants to sit and watch you just sit in the woods like this yeah no no (laughs) no you know that's that's not gonna bring if they do they're creepy people 
Yeah. Or yeah. us fighting with our equipment and then Joe and I getting in an argument because, oh, you didn't bring this and you didn't do that. You know, that's kind of funny and entertaining. But, um, you know, but there's a, there's a lot to doing this kind of work that is really freaking boring. It's really, really yeah. boring. Um, I will We will go into the woods for hours and just nothing happens. And that's cool and all. That's the reality of doing the kind of work that we do. But that's not fun or interesting to watch. Um, and I want, in addition to being, you know, something that I put out there, or the what the videos that I put out there, I want to be proud of. Um, I want people to really enjoy watching them. I want them to watch them a couple of times, and I want them to constantly like really enjoy watching them. So that's why I kind of just cream of the crop it. You know, speaking of wrestling, you got Randy Savage, the cream of the crop. Uh, I the cream I, rises to the top. I uh I just I just I want the I want the best that I can offer to people with everything that I do. So um yeah, it's some of that stuff is cryptotainment and that might just be a gateway drug is my main point yeah. here and my rambling. And and you know th there's nothing like like you were saying there's absolutely nothing wrong with that because once people actually get into it they start noticing like where where the entertainment is, where the where the the deep stuff is you know yeah. and and your content's a great mix of both yeah and um so so yeah well, yeah I mean, there's, there's um there's, there's a lot of and then there's outright hoaxes yeah yeah you, know, yeah. you, you don't do that so yeah then that's where you got to kind of draw the line um Absolutely. and that's again like if if we if we could put it, it like people tell us all the time, well, you need to put out a video, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I don't have anything. We went out. We didn't get anything. I'm not putting out hoaxes. I'm not putting yeah. out fake stuff just yeah. to get YouTube hits or anything like that. Um, yeah. If I was going, I, that's I that's absolutely not what we're going to do ever, ever, ever. So, yeah, yeah. we'll go weeks without having a video because we go weeks in the woods with. Absolutely I don't have any activity. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing happening. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, but you're, you're in a society where a lot of stuff is driven by clicks and likes and things like that. So you're going to have yep. people like really give into hoaxes and cryptotainment and stuff like that, but that's okay. Like I said, if it's a gateway drug, it's, it's, it serves some kind of purpose. And just look at mountain monsters, man. Mountain yeah. monsters opened the door for all kinds of people to get entertained and into this stuff. And, and then kids. they found us <laughs> and you know, they start looking at us and they 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 take us seriously. They 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 got introduced to the weird stuff through them. Yes. The kids fall in love with them because, like you said, it's like kind of like professional wrestling. Yeah. They're they're very uh, over the top, larger than life people. And they're and, very they're very kind and genuine genuine people. Like Wild yeah. Bill is a very kind and genuine person. Um, and what they do is, you know, a lot of kids watch Mountain Monsters, and it completely changes their lives. That yep. they are like, oh my god, you know, I I, I want to go do this. I want to do this. And then that is your next generation of people who are gonna do the kind of work that we do. And I think that's awesome. You know, that's that's like watching, um, you know, uh the what was what what did everybody watch with Leonard Nimoy I'm I'm rambling I know I'm sorry and Sergio. And Sergio. yes and Sergio with Leonard Nimoy like everybody yeah. watched that and everybody was like oh my god like introduced to these concepts yeah. and that you watch that as a kid and you're just like oh my god this this could be real this has changed my life this is what I want to do and then that's how like people you know my age and older got into this and I, I think Mountain Monsters is absolutely a gateway drug kids to get into that, you know, and, and possibly find a career in it, or, yeah. you know, could be the people that find that piece of evidence that once and for all, like ends the debate on Sasquatch or, or dog man or anything like that. So I, it's awesome. Agree. 100% <laughs> agree. Um, so uh, the, the, we've got, We've got the orbs. We've covered Bigfoot. We talked a little bit about the UAPs, UFOs. A, what are you thinking? I have a case. I have a case that we're Ooh. looking into right now. I wanted to kind of mention to y'all. Sure. Um, so I'm just going to give you kind of a rundown on it. There's a guy that contact we got in contact with. Um, so he contacted another researcher, and the, re the other researcher brought it to us. 
Um, so I think we are going to actually go up there and check into the situation on the ground. But um, he was having really aggressive activity on his property in Kentucky. And um, his wife, his brother, and his mother all got on the phone. Because Joe has done several phone interviews with this gentleman. And they all three got on the phone and were like, very sincere to like really just corroborating the story and everything like that um so what happened is around where he lives um they're building a highway through the area and there was a there was a several mounds through there before oh. they started the construction on the highway Ooh. and i think that they kind of got around doing any kind of real survey on the land and they just went Right yep. through. Um, and so there's been a lot of movement of the earth. And uh, he said that there were just all these mounds back there, but then they're kind of getting destroyed and all of this. So when that started happening, and that was at the edge of his property, when that started happening, um, he started having this experience. So what was happening? He's got surveillance cameras outside of his house. And he started seeing something on the cameras. And he went out there one night and he saw a tall very very dark lanky figure and he said that it looked like it had a deer skull over its face um he said that he's had hogs killed he's had goats ripped apart um and then he shot it one night and it had no effect on it like he shot it because we're like okay do you think it could be a guy in a costume or something like that he goes no, this is huge. And it kicked his door in one night. It came through the door and he ended up having to put a barricade over the back door. Um, but he shot at it one night and it had no effect, like no effect whatsoever. Um, so he, you know, he's never been really into cryptids or anything like that. We kind of did. I'm, I'm pretty good at doing some background checks on people. Um, I'm a good little amateur detective in that way. So I went all over anything about him. I was trying to make sure he wasn't interested in cryptids, didn't have like any sort of internet footprint where he was doing any kind of research about it or anything like that. Nothing. I found nothing of the sort, just normal stuff. Facebook pages are all just full of normal stuff. Didn't even share, you know, hasn't even shared any of the Bigfoot hoax videos or anything like that. Um, but he said that he kind of was doing some searching online. And he looked up and he's like, I think it's a Wendigo. I think it's a Wendigo. So he thinks it's a Wendigo. Um, but yeah, so that's where we're at with this case right now. And we're talking about going up and actually checking out the area and checking out where these mounds were. And he's got photos of these animals that were killed. And he's got surveillance footage of dark figures kind of going past his vehicle and all kinds of stuff. So um, that is kind of in progress right now, and we're going to probably head up there shortly and go check that out. Now, you were um, – he, he was mentioned in the Wendigo. Um, mm -hmm. There's uh, – you, you know, it, it, it wasn't until really pop culture got a hold of it to really yeah. add the deer head to it, but there's these See, forests that's – that's why we're, we're like, eh, it might be a Wendigo. The, like, he thinks it's a Wendigo thing because of the deer skull thing. But yeah. he said it looked like a mask over something. Well, now, could he um, – there there were cultures that wore those that type of regalia. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the Norse wore uh, the, the deer skulls and whatnot, and they would the, – in their ceremonies and whatnot. Um, and I'm sure that First Nations people probably use the same stuff as well. I mean, you see a lot of this common use items. They did. It was yeah. very um, ceremonial, especially during such things as the ghost dance and a few other uh, ceremonies that took place out west. Yeah. But I don't know about Kentucky. That's kind of different. But who knows? Yeah, possible. So. Yeah. So what about like maybe even like a forest spirit, like a, a Lacey or something? Yeah. Something that would have that. Uh, what did did he see the skull, or maybe was it like he said it tree branches? Looked, it looked like a skull. It okay, so he actually saw like uh, it, it wasn't just silhouetted. He actually saw the. He said it saw. He saw what looked okay. like it was wearing a skull. It was not it. Not that it was. Not that its head was. But it was wearing skull. like a mask. Wearing a skull. So that's mm -hmm. what the that was very. 
that was a, an interesting piece of information to me because it's like not his head was a deer skull, you know. Normally, so, people are talking about like Wendigo, like the 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 common view of a Wendigo. You know what I'm saying? The head no, is a deer skull, not a there, mask. There was there was a, a couple of sighting reports. Um, they're older, older sighting reports from here in West Virginia. Um, from the uh, an area that's it's a it's now a park. It's called Cabway Lingo, which is Cabell, Wayne, Lincoln, and Mingo counties. It's like okay. right in the middle of all those, and those counties all border Kentucky. Um, but it was of a uh, one of them, two of them. Let me think. Two of them, I think at least, uh, mentioned that it was a Bigfoot that was wearing a deer hide okay and one of them uh it was like the the skull was still in the hide and it was like okay. wearing it over its head so it looked like it had antlers okay but it was a bigfoot like they just they even said that in the report like this i saw a bigfoot wearing a deer hide that mm -hmm. had the head attached so it had antlers yeah so depending on what part of kentucky he's in i mean that I, again, I'm not like I'm not a big fan of the speculation of like well, this culture of Bigfoot does this, but like it, you're in that region, you're on that same track because those counties right. border Kentucky. Um, depending on where he's at in Kentucky, it might have been something that could be a, a commonality. Yeah, among, or a, a, learned, a learned behavior, or a developed yeah, some behavior. kind of learned behavior. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, like it because uh, the the. The description was almost like the the head went over its face, but it wasn't like a mask. It was more like a really low hood. Yeah. But the head set like facing forward, like the eyes were set facing forward. So yeah, yeah, it's real real weird. And um, they called it the the first couple reports called it the deer man, but it wasn't deer man. They they were very clear to say this isn't like an upright walking deer. It was like a wild man wearing a deer pelt that was yeah. you know. Yeah, and it, it, like the creature, whatever this was, is described as large, dark, lanky, long limbs. Other paranormal activity taking place as well, Jess? No, no, mm -hmm. it's it's mostly physical. Physical? Yeah, it seems and like that is interesting. Everything he's talking about is physical. It it doesn't seem like there's any. I, mm. I to my knowledge, he hasn't mentioned any lights, orbs, anything right. like that. Any you know. RSPK type activity. None of that. No. Nope. Hmm. Nope. They everything Ooh. seems like purely physical. Um this is interesting. He, yeah, I know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're 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 trying to decide if we're gonna go up there and because this is also, you know, this is this will be something kind of new for us in terms of going and investigating something up that far mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. on someone with somebody who's experiencing these things. Yeah directly um we went and we talked to witnesses when we first started doing um dogman research we had a guy get in touch with us in uh, north carolina and we went up there and interviewed him we talked about what he saw we went to the area where he saw it he showed us everywhere and everything we saw we we're still in touch with that gentleman now um so we started doing some of that instead of just independent investigations um but we've got somebody that just contacted us from probably about an hour away from here that we're going to have to go to his property and check it out too. Th that's the thing is like with my video getting bigger, I have more people contacting me. With, yeah. Um, so he's, he saw what looked like a dog monkey and it's literally ripping coyotes in half. Um, oh, okay. A dog monkey. Finding, and this is somewhere, you know, this is like somewhere about an hour from us. Um, but he's finding like coyotes, literally like ripped in half on his property and he saw the creature and he described it as like a dog monkey um with ram's horns and he said his words were and it had jacked up teeth so yeah. um that again? Right? <laughs> yeah. we're just like we're just like oh my god it's just it, it seems like everything is just getting weirder you know it just seems like like we're yeah, I'm intrigued about the ripping a sas or ripping a not sasquatch ripping a uh, coyote in half. Like it. is is it like front to back ripped in half or like grabbed and raw? I I don't know. Uh, I don't part. know the 
I don't know the specifics of the coyote ripping, but um, it is just that that this is multiple animals just tore asunder is basically ah. what it sounds like. So, yeah. Um, so that's something we're looking at too. Like I said, I we our my my email inbox is just getting just hit with pe- all these people, and you wouldn't believe some of the things people are telling me. Uh, but that, all these people seem very sincere. Um, I've talked to some of these people on the phone and, you know, we've been in contact with these people over an ongoing period. We, we do our due diligence when it comes to looking into people and looking into their stories and really listening to their stories and um, just kind of seeing if there's any kind of falsehoods in there. But there's a lot of people telling us some real crazy stuff. And that's what leads me to believe that, yeah, I think things are just getting weirder. Very well could be guys. Yeah. Well, I think we've uh, we're kind of coming up actually near a time segment here where we got to cut her off. So, Jesse, go ahead and uh, take us home. Have I not done enough talking today? <laughs> nope. I can do it. Sorry. Okay. Yes. All right, everybody, my friends, my cohorts, my constituents. Um, my name is Jesse, and I am with Helbit Holler along with my partner Joe Doyle, and. You can find us at hellbentholler.com or you can find us on YouTube. Just search Hellbent Holler. We have really cool videos about Sasquatch and Dogman and all of our investigations out in the woods where we actually go in the woods and investigate these creatures and try to see if we can get some evidence to their existence. Um, You can also find me on Instagram at Hellbent Jesse. You can find Joe Purdue at Skinwalker Sculpts on Instagram. You can also find him on Facebook. You can find Ron Lanham on Facebook, and his name on Instagram is Lanham Ron. And <laughs> I said it like a like a robot there, robot. Lanham Ron. Um, and make sure we really appreciate we really really appreciate all of you listening to this show and watching our videos um, and participating in the conversations that we have because it's really important that we have these conversations and kind of like Ron said earlier. I might have a piece of the puzzle. You might have a piece of the puzzle and we get those pieces together and maybe we'll, we'll get a little bit of a picture of what's going on with all of this paranormal phenomenon. Um, but make sure that you like share and subscribe all of the wild and weird episodes that you watch and listen to, or that you don't listen to just do it anyway, go through and like all of them. Make sure you comment um, down below. Uh, let us know what you think about the show, or if you have any ideas for anything you want to lis- listen to us talk about, listen to me ramble about, just throw it in the comment section below. Make sure you turn on your notifications so you know when new videos are coming out. And if you're listening to the show on a podcast aggregator, make sure you also download the episode because that also helps with our numbers. And we really, really appreciate you being a part of our wild and weird family. Um, Joe, do you have any threats before we uh, end the show? (laughs) Remember, next week is Woodbooker Jamboree. You don't want to miss it. It is going to be a blast. And if you don't come, (laughs) I got nothing. Just come to Woodbooker Jamboree. It's going to be a blast, guys. Yep. It's in Racing, West Virginia, and yep. it's a basically a Bigfoot block party. Um, we are discussing possibly coming up. Sweet. So uh, we will let y'all know, and then y'all can let others know if we're going to come. So, oh, but we are yeah. discussing it. We are, we're in the Carolinas, so it is a little bit. It is a little bit of a haul. It is. Um, but I was looking at the map, and I was like, oh, we can go through Beckley, West Virginia, and stop and get some you know, antiques from the deep end, uh, yep. you know, make it a trip. Out. Yes. A trip, you know. Um, so we were looking at that. So I'll let you guys know if we plan on doing that. So, um, all right, guys, we're going to take it out. Thank you guys for listening and everybody have a wild and weird week. And I hope you guys look forward to listening to our next episode. Cause it's going to be a great one. Stay wild and weird, everybody.